My number was 157108. This was my number in Auschwitz. And they told us you will only be called by your number, but not by your name, which indicated that we are not any more human beings, we are a number only. I started hearing noises, gunshots, people screaming, homes being burned. It's like living a nightmare. You feel hungry every day, you could not have anything to eat. Your food allowance is of one spoon of rice a day per person. October 1943, I was deported to uh, Auschwitz. No food, no drinks was given to us during the whole of the journey. It was terrible. By the time we arrived actually in Auschwitz, four people were dead in our wagon. The people who came with their wives or with their mothers asked the prisoners, the old prisoners, where are our family? We came here with our, uh, with our women and we only see men here in our camp. He said, don't you ever ask this because you will never see your families again. I wanted to be a doctor, but because of my tribe, in spite of the high grades, my name could not appear that I, I passed. And end of my studies, the war began. They had put roadblocks in every street, and that night we ran away. When the killing field started in 1975, I was only 17, 18 years old. And one day we just been forced out of the house. We got about 10 families together, two uncles, my aunt, and then a few neighbors and all went together in one direction. And we we've been forced to live in the jungle for four, four years. There's no, no freedom, nothing, not even electricity. It's just completely in the darkness, dark age. They call year zero. We came from hiding. I met one of my brothers. We looked at each other, asking ourselves what to do next. And suddenly, um, one of the kids, I don't know, he came and grabbed him took him to the side road and shot him. And that did the last day I saw him. I went uh, home to find my people. Every Tutsi's home, they had dug pits where they would be thrown. My young brother saw me coming, approaching. He told me, go. We are going to be killed. We don't want you to die with us. And the killer who was bending, he didn't see me. I just went. And um, I decided to leave the place. Every night you worry, because in the jungle you worry about animals coming and kill you. Daytime, you worry about the Pol Pot soldier coming in and, and take you away to kill. My, my grandma died first, and then my brother, all the neighbors who came with us, died one by one. I look at them and say, you are so lucky. You are died, you're gone now. You, you not suffer anymore. I'm the one who's still alive here. I don't know what's going to happen to me next day. We were taken to the final camp, Bergen-Belsen. The hunger in Bergen-Belsen was unbelievable. The ground of Bergen-Belsen was full of dead people. And I saw with my own eyes young people finding sharp stones. And they went with the sharp stones to the dead bodies, cut up the flesh from the sharp bones and uh, roasted the, 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 the uh, flesh on, uh, over fire. Cannibalism was ripe in Bergen-Belsen. I was hiding, I was found and taken with a group to be killed. They put us online. 
killing one by one. And uh, when they reached on me, one uh, smashed my leg. I have a, a scar here. I fell down. And before they finished me, there was a man behind me. He tried to run away. When he tried to run away, these killers ran after him. And I got a chance to escape. That was a miracle. I'm a lucky guy because I inherited from my mother a, an attitude in life. She was the greatest optimist. Everything will be okay, I said to myself. Everything, I'll come out okay. I'll be, a, uh, I'll be liberated. Everything will be okay. And this optimism actually saved me. I didn't have any hope or thought that I would be here today. Never. And I thought my life would end in the jungle. But one thing my mother keeps saying to me, keep hoping you might see your father again. That's, that hoping keep carrying me to, to live on. And the reason we escaped from Siem Reap at the time from Cambodia to Rovaji camp, because we thought it's a message from my father. Maybe he might be in a Rovaji camp, but it wasn't, could not, you know, we could not find him, never see him again. Somehow or other, I feel I should tell the children in school very often that there are mixed ethnics in these schools. I want them to realize you are very lucky to live here in England in a democracy because here things will never, never happen like this in England. Only one or two leaders can, can destroy the whole country, the whole nation, the whole culture. You may have a good job now, you may have a big house, but it could happen, it's not permanent. So what happened in Cambodia at the time, it just happened 24 hours, turned to year zero. The whole city completely empty like ghost town. I will never forget what the Nazis have done during the Second World War to us Jews, six million Jews to kill them like that. I will never forget it and I will never forgive. I was a Buddhist monk for two years but I'm really pleased about it because I learned how to cope with all the suffering and try to forgive and forget things. You know what they did? Because most of them were our friends. I could not see that they could do such things. But because who I am as a Christian, we, we were taught to forgive. <laughs>